it's nice of everyone to join us today for this um, uh, information session about the Graduate Certificate of Professional Equity and Inclusion. Um, uh, I might just hand over to, to Matt for an acknowledgement of country. Thanks, Matt. Uh, good to be with you all. And we wanted to start today by acknowledging that we three um, are joining you from the traditional lands, the unceded lands of the Ambalon clan of the Awabakal people. Um, this is a, a session that, about a grad cert that really wants to remember the histories and struggles and violences and possibilities uh, related to equity and social justice. And so we, we earnestly want to pay uh, respects to elders past, present and emerging and to Indigenous, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander colleagues who are with us today and to acknowledge the traditional custodians from the lands from which everyone is joining from today. Thank you. Um, so today uh, we uh, uh, want to provide a little bit of information around the uh, Graduate Certificate of Professional Equity and Inclusion. The way that we're going to do that is uh, myself, um, Professor Penny Jane Burke and Dr. Matt Long will talk to you about some of the connections uh, and, uh, with our uh, research here at CEHE, uh, with our, our kind of philosophy here at CEHE, um, and where the idea of this grad cert come from. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the philosophy behind the graduate certificate. Um, and we'll also be um, uh, meeting Kinney, who uh, is, is also here, um, and to talk about the student experience. This is the first year that the graduate certificate has been running. Um, and Kinney is about to be our first graduate from the program, which is super exciting. Um, so uh, with that, um, I might just start by talking a little bit about where this graduate certificate came from. So um, one of the, the issues that we, we've um, talked about, uh, we used to run a program called the Writing Program, um, and we were involved with uh, a lot of equity practitioners who are working in this field. Um, and one of the ideas, I think, that under, uh, sat underneath that writing program was the idea of trying to trouble a lot of the conventional ways that we understand equity within specifically higher education. However, working across a lot of these sectors, one of the things that we're seeing a lot of is that equity, diversity and inclusion have become watchwords. And you see it everywhere. Lots of institutions and organisations are talking about these things as really key issues. Um, but one of the, the challenges certainly that I've found in working across these spaces um, with a lot of equity practitioners at, uh, and, and across a number of different sectors has been that um, there's often, uh, these ideas aren't very well defined. What, what is equity, diversity and inclusion? What is it supposed to do? Um, and subsequently, there are often not boxes available to put the kinds of problems that you're facing into. So one of the difficulties that we're we're trying to unpack with this idea of the graduate certificate is a space that starts to trouble some of the conventional understandings of equity, diversity and inclusion, and starts to bring in some of the, the more complex understandings of social inequality and disparity, so that and how they pervade institutions and organisations. Um, our experience, uh, the, the three of us are going to uh, do a substantial amount of the teaching into the graduate certificate, along with colleagues from uh, humanities, creative industries and social sciences, a, a school here at the university. Um, and uh, along with this, we, we have compiled through our own extensive experience now, working um, across institutions, some of the ways both that these problems manifest, but also some of the way, ways that we can push forward our understandings of these kinds of problems through things like social theory. Um, so with that, I might hand over to Penny to talk a little bit about the program as well. Um, Thank you, Matt. And um, thanks to everybody for being here. Um, I'm Penny Jane Burke, and I'm the director of the Center of Excellence for Equity in Higher Education at the University of Newcastle. We call that CE for short um, because it's quite a mouthful. And I'm also UNESCO chair in equity, social justice, and higher education. Um, and I'm just going to say a little bit about 
um, you know, how, where the program is located in CEHE and why, um, and give you a little bit more context around that. Um, because it's an important environment for the development of the program and the way in which we work and we think about equity, diversity, and inclusion. So um, CEHE is a really unique hub. Um, I say it's unique because um, a lot of the um, structures and universities for equity, um, diversity, and inclusion kind of peripherize it. In other words, um, there's a unit um, of, of equity um, that perhaps takes on the responsibility. It's often um, a very small team of people who are carrying the weight of that. And um, as Matt talked about, uh, there's, there's often very little space and resources for people to delve more deeply into thinking about what this work means, what it, it entails, um, how it is, um, it is actually about kind of broader historical intergenerational and entrenched social inequalities that manifest in various different ways in the different contexts in which we're trying to build equity, diversity, and inclusion. So although there's incredible expertise and knowledge around um, the sector um, and in, in terms of people who are taking on the responsibility of equity, diversity, and inclusion. And so part of the work is actually how do we acknowledge that incredible expertise when it tends to also be on the margins. Um, but also how do we build connections between the practice of equity, diversity, and inclusion, the kind of challenge of developing strategies for that, um, as well as practices, and the, you know, the um, incredible rich bodies of literature and, and theory that help us to um, build a, a deeper understanding of what's behind equity, diversity, and inclusion. What are the kind of hidden um, dimensions that are not necessarily being spoken through the language of equity, diversity, and inclusion? And how do we make sense of those? So um, CEHE is very interested in working together with a whole range of, of participants in different contexts um, to, to build together, um, to learn together, um, and to develop um, practice together uh, around this perplexing challenge of, you know, of, of equity and how we build equity within our organizations and how our organizations can also contribute to broader ongoing commitments to equity, diversity, and inclusion, and social justice. Um, so that is kind of the location of the program within CEHE. We really wanted to broaden the work because we do, um, although we're focused on the question of higher education's relationship to equity, we also work very closely with other community organizations, um, agencies, um, and also people in um, communities that have been marginalized from being able to develop equity strategies, for example, and practices. So um, that's the way that we work, and we wanted to sort of echo that in the structure of the program. So it's, it's a very kind of broad um, context that people are coming from and bringing different challenges into the program. And really what we're trying to do is offer some of the, the tools and the material um, and the language that can help them facilitate um, a deepened relationship with questions around equity, diversity, and inclusion, and how we can then build strategies and practices that are uh, sustainable and able to um, uh, uh, build a, a, a long-term kind of um, approach to making change and transformation, um, whether that's in the organization or how the organiza organization sits in relationship to its broader communities. Um, and that relates very much to the UNESCO chair. So it, uh, the, the program is also associated with the UNESCO chair in equity, social justice, and higher education which is very much about mobilizing our institutions and um, organizations for equity and social justice. So rather than just think about what it means to do equity in our organizations, it's also about thinking about how our organizations are also complicit maybe in producing inequalities, but can also transform and challenge those inequalities. I think one of the really exciting things about the program though is 
that it is affiliated with the UNESCO chair, which is a very collaborative scheme. So although there is a um, that there is a kind of named person who's occupying that chair, that role. Um, it's very much about mobilizing networks and community <clears throat> partnerships and a whole range of different collaborative mechanisms to try to make change and to try to uh, generate transformation. So, um, in being part of that, of being part of the program, there's access to some of those networks and. Um, community spaces to, to be able to engage with others, and, and that's part of the, um, the vision of the program as well. And um, we also have a, um, a UNITAR Center, um, CFAL, at the University of Newcastle, which is part of the United Nations. So um, students will also have um, certification from the United Nations when they participate in the program. This is a new thing. So for students who have been participating, this will be available to them, but also for new students coming in, this will also be um, something that we're able to um, provide. So maybe I'll stop there because I'm yeah. sure that I'm over my five minutes <laughs> and hand over to Matt, but we can continue the conversation as we go. Thanks, Penny. Uh, I think my role is to um, dive down into one of the courses, one of the four courses that make up the graduate certificate and talk a little bit about um, my experience with uh, colleagues and students convening one of the courses. And this was a course that relates very much to the history that Matt referred to before. It's a course called Writing the Field of Equity. It was a course that was co-taught by myself and Matt and Penny, but also Dr. Ryle Gordon taught into the course on a week uh, on uh, ethics, the political ethical framework that we are offering as one of the tools that's been referred to, to think with uh, for students. This course um, is really about trying to drag into the foreground some of the less commonly discussed aspects of how writing, authorship, authority relate to equity and inclusion, the sorts of things that Matt and Penny have already referred to. Specifically, uh, how you know, processes of writing and reading are always a struggle over meaning, particularly as different forms of, you know, as we as authors might represent or as we are represented through processes of, of writing, for example, and this might be in, in many different forms, published work, uh, emails, strategy documents, um, case files. There's some really interesting discussions this semester um, and some teaching around uh, questions of archival justice, for example. Um, really the, the course, and this has been a focus of the, the writing program too, of course, is trying to uh, explore this idea of reading and writing is always socially situated. So social practices that are always moving through, constructed by and reconstituting sort of a wider contexts, histories, conceptualizations of problems, and how that uh, can feed into um, yeah, questions of categorization and representation. And so to explore Explore all of that. I mean, people who have worked with CEHE or are associated with CEHE will be unsurprised to know that really moving through that with ideas around sort of reflexivity, positionality, ethics, identity, subjectivity, um, and not doing that simply from our own sort of perspectives, but getting a lot of guests in to have a diversity of perspectives in the mix about how. Um, you know, whether it's be through processes of publication or authorship or in readership too, that these um, constructions are at play. But certainly as, as critical sociologists, we're interested in trying to make sure there's always um, some conceptualization of power at play. And, and an example of that is, you know, part of the course is about trying to discuss and um, identify relations of power between, for example, authors and audiences, writers and readers, how we um, anticipate each other, construct each other, and how no sort of effort at communication, certainly in terms of reading and writing, has those socially situated practices. It's, it's never clean, 
It's never precise. It's, there's always interpretation, slippage, uh, negotiation. That's sort of going back to that idea of struggle over, over meaning. So what are the consequences of that for people, for projects? That, that is very much at the heart of the course. And really trying to think about the responsibility of writing in the field of equity and inclusion. Um, part of the assessment structure is designed to welcome uh, uh, students' own concerns and context into that interplay between the sort of um, what, what they're bringing in terms of their knowledge has been referred to already, um, but bringing that into conversation with these conceptual tools and seeing what can evolve. And it's been interesting to see some of the feedback this course in terms of how the personal is always wrapped up in that sort of broader political um, societal kind of context that people are really thinking about themselves as authors or how they've always thought about themselves as writers or it is interesting that's always in the mix and it can become a subject of inquiry too. So that's been very much alive this semester. And I'll stop there. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Um, so, yeah, uh, if anyone does have any questions, please um, pop them into the chat and we'll, we'll get to them or you can uh, um, answer them at the end. Um, so with Matt, Matt's very uh, generous sort of reading of the, of the writing the field of equity course, I will go over the courses in a second, but, but I think that that's a really great um, rundown on how these courses are, are being thought about, what, what, how we're, we're trying to break with convention a little bit in how we understand concepts of equity, diversity, and inclusion within the, the graduate certificate. But now what I'd like to do is hand over to, to Kinney to talk about um, her experience of, of doing the graduate certificate. Hello. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kinney. Um, I am, uh, I'm on Dungadi country and I'm um, the centre manager of the country university centre Maclay Valley and I'm also a councillor on my local council. Um, so I'm an elected um, local politician here um, here in Kempsey, which is about two and a half hours north of Newcastle. Um, and it's a really interesting community to work in. Um, and it's um, really, um, you yeah. know, sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. I don't know why. Um, but I chose to study this course because I've actually worked in the field of equity for quite a few years. So I worked at the University of Wollongong um, in um, STEM outreach, and then I got the job here as centre manager for CUC Maclay Valley. Um, and it was really timely to study this course um, with um, the um, ARCWOD P um, program program funding that we got. So we're running some school programs and it was interesting to study the course and some of the things that we're all doing within the graduate certificate. I was also doing at work at the same time. Um, but this course really, really um, interested, interested me and it was really a, like a fantastic experience. I study online. Um, so I didn't get to get to get to come to anything face to face, which would have been awesome. I really wanted to get to some of the um, seminars that were hosted on a weekend. Um, but the biggest things for me out of the course were just was firstly, just the course was really well designed as a mature age student. I finished my first uni degree back in 2016. Um, coming back to study, I was a little bit nervous, but um, the content was like really well delivered and really varied so I could jump in and jump out as I needed to. Um, I, I work full time and I have a bunch of other commitments so that was really important to me. Um, and the use of real world contexts um, within the course so I could always relate what I was doing within the course back to a problem or back to um, something within my job or within my role as counsellor. So um, yeah. That was that was really good, um, and I and I have to say that the teachers were really amazing. Um, I always got comprehensive and and thought thought out feedback, yeah, well thought out feedback, which really kept me engaged as a student, particularly online, where you have like only sparing engagement, I guess, with your with your teachers. Um, but yeah, that was that was really really good. Um, some examples of I guess 
how I've used the course in my in my professional um, experience um, was probably uh, one of the subjects was um, the is advocacy was the advocacy subject. I forget what it's called, but it really gave me a, a strong understanding of the different domains on in which I can advocate for people, whether that's personally, politically, or professionally. Um, it was really interesting an assignment that I was doing was running parallel with an issue or a, yeah I guess an issue I felt I was having um, in council um, council meetings as with discrimination and I kind of did my assignment um, as a way that I would have combated the issue and it was really interesting to see how I could plan that out and um, I didn't get to do all of the stuff that I'd planned in my assignment, but it was interesting to see how if I, like, if I really wanted to, I would, ha I had a framework in which I could advocate in, in that political, in that political way. Um, and the program design and evaluation subject was really um, interesting as well, doing, um, as a, as someone who works in equity, um, like, it was interest like it was good to formally kind of design a project and use different tools that I hadn't thought of using before um, and tools that are out there already like um, frameworks from the UN and the OECD um, that I weren't aware of and just putting those into the design of a program and then evaluating it as well and I that really deepened my understanding and I think that that's something that's really important as someone as someone who works in the equity space um, the like the course gave me really really um essential tools and skills that i i've already used and i think i'll keep you i definitely will keep using um in my yeah my professional and political um domains but yeah thank you thank you for that kenny that was awesome um so uh now i just want to talk a little bit about what's in the actual program um let's see um, so the, the graduate certificate um, is offered face-to-face -face and um, uh, asynchronous online. Um, so it's possible to do all of these subjects um, without having to actually come to Newcastle if you're, if you're not local, but we also offer them all face-to-face -face as well um, if you are ha happening to be in the area. Um, the uh, next... In, in order to, we've, we've designed this with the idea that we're expecting most people who would like to be doing a, a graduate certificate like this um, would be doing so part-time. Um, so the way that we've loaded this is so that it's possible for you to do full-time in, in semester one um, and then do part-time otherwise. The, the four... Um, Courses that are in the graduate certificate are key issues in professional equity and inclusion, uh, shaping organisations and communities, advocacy and change, um, uh, writing the field of equity and project design and evaluation. And these are aimed at, at covering some of the key areas that, that we deal with when we're uh, doing professional and institutional equity, diversity and inclusion. Um, key issues in professional equity and inclusion cover quite a wide range of uh, issues as to, as to how they relate to the problem of equity across these spaces. In particular, um, uh, some of the, the greater problems inside of organisations, such as the sort of histories of how EDI has come around as a problematic, um, and covering ideas such as how uh, notions of EDI can almost become a sort of a, uh, bottlenecks, I suppose we could say, um, in terms of actually getting meaningful equity work done and then how we can work and approach these things. Um, we also look into more detailed problems such as how ideas such as meritocracy, talent, intelligence, uh, these kinds of things um, intersect and how they actually produce the, the, the problematic of equity well before we have to deal with it inside of institutions. I'm sure we've all come across the idea of equity as this thing that we, we, we're trying to, to bring people in, but then, of course, um, it becomes uh, who, who's the most talented or, or the most deserving or the most merited. 
But these ideas themselves need to actually be questioned. Where do they come from? And how do they affect how institutions um, operationalize uh, ideas about equity and diversity? It just so happens that um, many of the, in many instances, privilege and talent tend to go hand in hand. And we, we pull that apart in, in this course, along with many other issues. Um, shaping organizations and communities, as, as Kenny's talked to, is, uh, is all about how to do advocacy across a wide variety of institutional and organizational settings. Um, and that's uh, convened by um, uh, uh, Heather Astland. Um, and in, in that course, uh, we deal with lots of different aspects of how, for example, um, institution, how, how do we deal with the problem of being advocates um, across when we're in an organisation and trying to deal with other organisations or governments or so on. Um, but also how do you deal with institutional advocacy, for example, um, where we are often having to try and advocate for meaningful equity, diversity and inclusion strategies to our bosses, potentially. So how do we actually do those sorts of, of things and how do we interrogate and work around all of the different um, options available to us within these settings? Um, as Matt's already talked really well to the idea um, of uh, writing the field of equity, in this, uh, a lot of the ideas here are very much writing as a muse and one of the, the heart and centres of how equity ideas are actually being produced. So it's a meaningful space for us to, to unpack and think about how, how in across equity, diversity and inclusion spaces, how much time we spend just having to write about what equity is, producing things like emails or um, policy or strategy documents and how these become the, the manifestation of how an organisation understands the idea of equity in the first place. I mean, project design and evaluation is aimed, it is slightly more conventional, but it's aimed at um, providing a basis for understanding in particular the, the processes of evaluation. They are always at the heart of um, equity of knowing, for example, how we measure it, how we value it, whether it's worked, how different kinds of initiatives have been implemented and what will happen in the future. So uh, with, with these courses all aim to, to bring together a, a, a series of ideas such as um, feminist theory, decolonial theory, intersectional theories, um, and to bring these in, into light, not only just as ways to interrogate the problem, but also to think about how we can produce meaningful change across institutional and organisational settings. Um, and we use quite a lot of robust teaching materials. Matt, again, has already talked to this. Um, in particular, the, the asynchronous online model has been built with the idea that we can put a pack as much into this as we can, but not to overwhelm but to, to provide different kinds of opportunities to access the, the material that we have. So for example, um, we have quite a lot of recordings with different guest speakers, as, as Matt's talked to, um, uh, with uh, interviewing people across to, uh, different areas of, of our respective institutions and, and professions, um, and to ask for them to, to provide other ways of understanding these kinds of issues. So you're not just hearing our particular take. There are no weeks that are just one, a, a big chunk of one or, or two hour lectures. All of the material has been broken up into ways of, of pursuing it into different kinds of learning um, uh, aids. Is that the word? Um, uh, and, and of course, one of the things that we use a lot in these courses is the idea of uh, uh, short podcasts because we've, this is something that we feel is a really important way that we can sort of, um, um, what would you say, um, uh, supplement the material so that many people working across equity, diversity and inclusion are in um, uh, are busy and it's not necessarily all that easy or convenient. We probably all spend a lot of time sitting at our computers, um, but being able to use a, a podcast medium is a way of also bringing that conversation along and, and being able to, to think and reflect on some of these problems in ways that, that aren't just about 
just a sort of narrow understanding of curriculum, but actually to, to give you a sort of um, a, a greater opportunity to, to, to absorb this while you're walking the dog or driving to work or those sorts of things. And uh, a lot of the material, as you'll see in the slide, such as the little optional lecture on the side that we have there, where we feel that there might be ideas that um, people want to pursue further or may not have come across before, it's possible to go and, and um, search down those, those links um, and, and, and either become more familiar or, or, or go into more depth on different kinds of topics. Um, so we, we've planned a, a lot of this very carefully so that it's, it's possible for people who, for example, um, yeah, a, a really um, well-attuned sociologist could absorb a lot from these courses, but also you can come in without having to um, understand all of the concepts and ideas at the basis. They are very much built in in a way that, that is accessible. Or that, or that is that is the ambition of the courses. Um, and yeah, so so with that, the other thing that I should probably mention is that um, there is a, this graduate certificate is connected to our Masters of Social Change and Development. Um, these are very um, closely related uh, degrees. So this is also a possible direct pathway into that Masters. So if you are considering doing something like a Masters, this is a very good pathway to be able to um, uh, do the graduate certificate and uh, all, all of the, the courses for this um, count as directed courses. Um, so then you can sort of move on to the, the masters if, if you are so inclined. Um, so with that, I'll, I might leave that there. And if there's any questions or, or comments that people would like to, to give, please um, drop them into the um, uh, into the, uh, the chat, or alternatively, just uh, put your hand up, and we'll. Um, and, uh... Um, there's a question in the chat from Alyssa about how many hours a week. I had to dedicate to my studies. Um, on a good week, <laughs> um, I probably would have done maybe two to three per subject. And then it was more as assignments came in. Um, Yeah, in, in general, I think all 10 unit subjects postgrad, they, they recommend 10 hours. Um, but I think that Kinney's read is probably quite a reasonable one in terms of how much time you know, you, the, the, the subject takes. And probably a few more hours for readings as well. So yeah, probably around yeah, like seven to eight and then more as, in, as needed. Uh, I have a question. Hi, it's Louise here from, I got a, I work at Swinburne Uni. Um, I'm just wondering, Matthew, if you can just explain the part-time um, study. I see that it was only offered full-time this year. Um, how does that work? Could you do one unit a semester? Because I work full-time like Kinney. So, um, or is there, would you rather that students do two? No, no, not at all. Um, uh, uh, one, it's possible to just study one course a semester, so 10 units. Um, and it, it's been planned out with the idea that all of the courses, you, you could start with any of them really. Um, I, my, I think the, the main courses that it would be best to start with are probably writing the field of equity or key issues in, in equity and inclusion, just as, to, as, as warm ups to the graduate certificate. I think they're better places to start. And we've planned it so that it's always possible to do one of those um, online at, at, or face-to-face -face at any point. So, uh, yeah, I would say that it's it's you, it, people are very much welcome to, to just do one unit a, a semester. Um, and while it's, and it's only possible, I'll just to, to, re to recap, the, to do the... Um, to do full time only in semester one, because we're not expecting that people are really, you know, people are going to be working and, and busy, and we're not expecting people to take up full time. But more than happy to have engagement and feedback on that that idea. But at this stage, we're, we're definitely planned with the idea that people would be doing one or two courses a semester. Okay, great. Thank you. That's great. Ah. 
What is the cost of the graduate certificate? Uh, that I can't quite tell you. Um, it's, but it, it depends. There's quite a lot of different um, uh, approaches to this, and it depends on where you're coming from. But if, if you want to drop me an email about it, I can I can help to follow up. Um, my understanding, depending upon where people are coming from, if they're paying it personally or if they're getting support through their different organisations or employers, um, there's there's lots of different schemes for for those supports. Um, but yeah, I, I have to probably deal with it on a case by case basis. Um, I hope that's helpful. But we can help. We can help figure that out. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So please do come to us, and we'll figure that through with you. Um, well, thank, thank you, everyone. Um, and uh, one thing I, I suppose I sort of want to maybe finish on is the idea of intersectionality. And, and um, we could maybe, uh, I, I think that one of the things that I found really important when we uh, read this in semester, uh, in key issues in equity and inclusion, is talking to this problem of, of intersectionality. Um, and one of the difficulties in, in understanding equity and, and all of the sort of conflated problems that, that surround it um, uh, is, is often comprised by this idea of intersectionality that's come into the EDI spaces a lot lately. Um, and I suppose what I'd like to reflect on is this idea that um, we intersectionality is a really complex and challenging idea that students in our first semester being run with, with, with Penny actually found this to be a really, um, what would be the word? Um, rigorous. <laughs> rigorous. Yeah. I think, I think because we're, we're really trying to engage with the idea that intersectionality is helping to understand how we experience things. Um, we experience disadvantage when we do often at the personal level or we make sense of it in terms of the individual. Um, but actually, this is about intersecting um, forces of inequality, structures of inequality, relations of power that play out to create the conditions in which a person or an individual suffers disadvantage. So um, really engaging with some of the, um, the kind of initial material around this um, Kimberly Crenshaw's um, original, um, you know, invitation to think about intersectionality so that we can think about how um, structures of racism um, play out in relationship to um, structures of patriarchy, for example. And, you know, I guess in the contemporary context, that really invites us to think about the broad range of structures and um, cultures of inequality that create the conditions in which we're differently located um, around disadvantage and inequality. But this can help us really think about what are the strategies that we can develop? What are the practices that we can develop that do not um, overly simplify um, how, how we experience these things? And I suppose the other thing that I didn't say earlier that I wanted to say is that we really, on the course, we really want to invite participants to be thinking about, you know, not just the um, institutional uh, or organizational level, but how that relates to wider social yeah. um, systems and structures and cultures, but also how that affects the personal and that, you know, you're a part of that. So, you know, very much bringing that back to your own context. So learning from each other, but also, and learning from the material, but also being able to um, reflect on your own experiences and what that means for how you think about equity and how you do equity. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you everyone for, for joining us. And um, uh, I hope to see you all in the future at some point. Um, and uh, please drop me a line um, or us at, here at CE um, if you've got any questions or, or you'd like any follow-up material. So, so thanks everyone for joining and um, uh, yeah, talk to you next time. Thank you.